So there's been a lot of talk on the channel about how football referees should be mic'd up, just like in rugby. Now, we obviously don't have it in football at the moment. However, there is one example down in Australia. Let's check it out. So let's see if this is a good idea to bring into football. I think it is. But let's see uh, from this A-League game. Now, a special day for Jared Gillett here at Suncorp. It's his 159th and final A-League match. Probably the longest intro I'll get. <laughs> <laughs> Avid skier. He's certainly our best of the modern era, and he will be missed. Pretty much. Bit of a uh, bit of referee banter going on. Now there if you want it. Keep playing, keep playing, keep playing, keep playing. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Good ball. Play on, play on, play on! Jared Gillett, happy to play. Ooh, I prefer shout and advantage, but that's just me. Um, but you can see straight away the communication in his ear. He has um, a two-way mic with the linos or the assistant referees. So there's constant talk there. The lino's saying he thinks it's a foul. He's saying, we'll play on. You know, the, the team has got the ball. All right, We don't want to stop play. This happens at every level. We don't want to stop play if the players want to keep playing. You know, we'll only stop it if we really have to. Play on. Bring back the double-hander. Pinged out by Botiak towards Wentzel Halls, who takes on Kamau and bends it! Oh, 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 oh. Nothing for me in the attacking phase, all good. 23? Yeah, 23. So, a goal went in. Normally, if it was me and it was a screamer like that, I'd be saying, good goal, good goal. I might go over um, as the team celebrates. I might um, walk with them. Normally, it's safer to walk with the team that scored because they're in a better mood. Um, but I will always say, good goal, good goal. Can we jog it back now, please? Um, just to try and get the game going a bit quicker to show the other team that I'm actually trying to help them by getting the game going as well. Um, but what you could see there is him talking to his lino, um, the lino in that attacking phase. Basically what you want to do is you check everything okay, no offsides, no fouls that you saw. Um, at my level when you, where you don't have, um, where you don't have bikes. Now obviously granted this mic really would just be between the linos and the, and the official and the fourth official um but obviously it's broadcast broadcast to the um to the, to the world i suppose um so at my level you'd have a thumbs up you'd put your thumbs up to them they would put their thumbs up eye contact um but it makes life a lot easier if you can speak to them you know you don't have to then be doing putting your hands and letting everyone see what's going on it's a discreet chat duke Join the contact from Pepper. Step out, step out, step out. Hey! Step yeah. out. Hey! Get away, get away. Hey! What are you doing? Trying to delay a restart. If it's, kick, right sure. the ball. if it's not your free kick, move away. Yeah? So it's an easy yellow. Hmm. Now did you see that? It was an easy yellow. It is a yellow card offence. Delaying a restart is a yellow card offence. So do you give a yellow? What do you guys think? Do you think you should give a yellow the first instance it happens? It's not really in an area that is going to be a goal scoring opportunity, so it's less, you know, it's less problematic. Um, in this situation, he is saying, you know, if you, basically he's saying do it again and it's a yellow um, because he's given a little bit of leeway. He's managing the game and talking to him. Um, but what do you think? Do you think he should give out a yellow there? How strict do you think he should be? Bonavazia flicked on. It's three-one. Yeah, Darren, I reckon that's off there just before. Just, in front. just wait for me. The defender played the ball yeah. for me. Has he? If yeah. it's the defender, you're fine. Yeah. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Come in. Just wait. In my view, the defender's deliberately played it just in front of him. <laughs> yep. So, how was he from the first pass? So from the first pass, he was fine. Yeah, it's right. when the middle one's being yeah, good, that he's no good. So from my view. With that, it's just gonna, a second pass. It's a second pass. So, so we'll, give it, we'll give it a goal and yeah. review it. Correct. Right. The decision's a goal, and then we'll check it. You there, Jared? Yep. The ball comes across, and it comes off the head of the defender. Right. 
Right. So we're going to say that it's... I believe he's played at the ball. Yep. And it's all clear. Do you want me to come and have a look to sell it? I think I better, because the players are expecting... Yep. So what he's doing there is he's had the perspectives from all the all the, the linesmen and the VAR. They've come to a decision whether it's right or wrong, that's up to them. But what he's doing well is to, he said, he will go and check the monitor to sell it to actually almost, because he's in the middle, he is more or less the highest authority in the game. So if he goes and makes, the, makes it look like he's made the decision personally, um, it takes a lot of sweat off the linesman, um, and well, not really the VAR guy, but um, it shows his authority and that he has made the decision. He has made the effort to go look at the screen. Um, yeah, whether or not it was offside or not is, a, is another matter. And he's, he's definitely uh, onside, that first player from the first pass, Mitchell Duke. Mitchell Duke's definitely onside. I agree, it's a goal. Matty, I'll just explain. Yeah, it's come off your defender, so it's fine. Yeah, he's on. Yeah. Not sure. Was it? And it was it. What? It was sort of more of a deflection than a than a second phase of play. Yeah. If he was off, even an offside position, I think I would have given it offside because it's the same phase of play. But anyway. Good stuff, lads. Uh, Maddie McCoy's accepted it. Watch this. Yep. Oh, there's a light one. Give it. Give it. You see how quickly he was to notice there might be a foul there. So he straight away t was speaking to his lino, said, watch this, because he could see something happening. That's very yeah, good quick yeah, well, reactions. Yeah, I reckon so too. Bruce, mate. Bruce, that's really, really late, mate. Yeah. They're coming to decisions to together. It gives the lino the opportunity to say, no, I don't think so. I think it was a red or I think it was nothing. There we go. How about that for a stat? 4,600 <laughs> and one blows of the whistle. <laughs> Jared, just... Um... Well done. That was your 4,600th <laughs> foul. Are you serious? Yeah, so I just put it up on the screen here. Do I, what, do I raise the bat? <laughs> 4,600. Just for um, reference, uh, I think this was this is his last um, A-League um, game that he officiated, um, and therefore that's why they're bringing up more stats and, and talking more, focusing on the referee. Now, all good. It's a good no, conversation. No pushing action. Correct. Spot on. Down. Now, in this situation, they're agreeing with each other, so it's easy. Um, now, if it's just a, a, a talking about just between the referees and not necessarily broadcast, but even it might be broadcast, um, the problem with lower level football without microphones to each other is that, yes, the, the referee gets first bite of the cherry, basically. Now, what you'd often hear is when you pre-game with the uh, um, middleman and the two linos, the middle guy will say, oh, first, there's three things. I'll either give it, I won't give it, or I'll be looking at you for help, which I don't personally like because as a lino, you're a qualified referee. So it should be more lines of give me the first bite. And then, um, you know, if time, if a few seconds goes on and I'm not sure, you know, and you sit and you're 100% it's maybe my blind side and you're in a credible position and you, but you are hundred percent, then you can give it. That's what I like. And, and I would say to my linos, but, um, by having a microphone in your ear, it makes communication so much easier and it makes the teamwork look nicer. You, you don't end up going against each other. You know, a referee saying no linesman saying yes, much easier. Got a touch. Never, never. Just to pass on a message, Darren would like you to hurry up the Western Sydney players. Tell him Matt McCoy wants me to end the game now. <laughs> Defender. Fine. Blinks. Fine. No, no, by his side. By his side. He didn't even see it. I know that it hit his hand. But for me, it's by his side that he didn't see it coming. Okay. Now, that is what the pundits want, isn't it? When, when there's a handball decision, for example, the pundits will say, oh, yeah, it was a handball. Oh, no, it wasn't a handball. But if you get the communication that's aired live that says, yes, it hit his hand, but there was no intent, his hands were by his side, 
you know, then straight away it clears up any punditry nonsense. You know, you then don't need a 10 minute discussion whether it's a handball or not because the referee has said why he's given it, you know, and it makes life a lot easier. <laughs> Oh, that was a horrible whistle. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Well, we do. Huh? Yeah, send him off with our very best and fully expect to see him refereeing in all seriousness in the Premier League in a matter of years. So, what are your thoughts on that? Now, I think, yes, we need the referees to be mic'd up. And when I say mic'd up, yes, they're already mic'd, but mic'd up so that the world can hear them. Um, it will stop, in my opinion, it will. It should stop a lot of the nonsense punditry where they question everything. If a referee on the pitch is able to explain why he's given things and, and talk through to the players, um, it would also cut out the fact that they would... Um, expected to go and talk in an interview after the game because at the end of the day they've said what they see during the game um, let me know what you think let me know what you think do you think it's a good idea do you think it's a bad idea let me know anyway guys if you enjoyed the video hit the like button hit the subscribe button and also that little bell icon give that a little click and then you'll know when I uh, when I post my videos might get a bit annoying but yeah give it a try I'll catch you next time.